Good day, it's Mike from Flex Radio, and today we're going to talk about updating your Smart SDR within the same version. So updating version 2 or version 3 or whatever version you look at, but the topic or the, the technique is the same. And how you do that is let's start with the main page, www.flexradio.com. Under here, the hover your mouse over the support tab, go to downloads, and if we ever change our website, we will still keep this in a download support slash download area. So uh, if the page ever changes, uh, you'll scroll down to that and you'll see a directory listing of files. This is where we keep all the key files to download. Uh, manuals are here, Power Genius information, Smart SDR information for iOS, and you get the idea. Let's talk about version 2. I clicked on that with my mouse. And that opened, and then we opened the installer and release notes. And here we can see all the versions from 2.1 through to 2.5. And in this case, I'm going to update a uh, Flex 6600M that I have sitting beside me from version 2.4.9 to version 2.5. So we click on this, and that will just start the download. And uh, obviously, we're going to pause and not wait for it. But when I click on that, you'll see that Google uh, Chrome that I happen to use is downloading the software right here. So we'll take a pause until we're done. Actually, I have pretty fast internet, so we're about done. So uh, your antivirus may check it. Uh, sometimes it gets marked by uh, Chrome as, uh, are you sure you want to touch this file? That's okay, it's been checked. I've clicked on it with my mouse, and we'll, we'll get rid of the browser now because we don't require it anymore. And we're going to, um, it says, uh, always ask before opening. This is a standard warning. You can expect that. And we're going to hit run. We want to accept this agreement. Uh, feel free to go through it. In fact, I usually do read them. But it's important that you do uh, go through it. You can't not go any further until you accept it. I hit accept. And I hit next. And this is where it's going to install uh, Smart SDR version 2.5.1. It tells us how much disk space we have. And if you want to install it somewhere else, go ahead. We highly recommend you just you go with the default. And if you look carefully, this will be in its own directory. This is a directory name. And that name is totally different from 2.4. And this is why you can have different versions of the Smart SDR in your computer. When you install a new version, it does not replace the previous version. It goes in as like a unique program so that you can actually run the old and the new program. So we hit next. It says what it's going to install and we hit next again and it's important that we do create the desktop shortcuts and there's a reason for that. If I bring over, uh, I'm just going to bring over some version 3 icons here so you can see them. Um, you'll notice in these shortcuts that the version is here and these are my version 3 icons but we're going to create those and they're going to uh, scatter them all over my desktop, and I'll, I will bring them all in so you can see them in a minute. I'm going to hit install. And in this case, I need to restart my computer because we did some significant driver changes here. This may or may not pop up. So I'm going to uh, pause the video here while I, um, while I start, uh, actually stop and reboot my computer, and then we'll come back. So when you reboot your computer, I want you to go find the icons for the version we downloaded. So remember the version that you were dealing with. And in this case, we've been dealing with 2.5.1. Find Smart SDR version 2.5.1. Do not confuse it with the previous version you ran because that won't get you anywhere. You need the new version. We double clicked on that and uh, it's going to pop up and we'll see 6600M. Uh, you'll see that its max license version is version 2. Uh, its IP address. This is some really key information and should we ever have a problem we will um, this is you can right click on this and say copy to clipboard and that'll put a whole bunch of cool radio information in your clipboard that you can paste in an email or support ticket to us that tell us tells us a fair bit of information. So what is that information? So I'll open up a text window here so you can see it. I'm gonna right click and hit paste and you'll see that it's got my uh, serial number the max license version has everything that's in this black box, but that it's uh, right here in a very simple way to copy. You don't take a screenshot or anything, so it's just a it's a support tool, very handy. So click on uh, the radio. We've clicked on this to highlight the radio, and I'm going to hit update. That's going to update the software in my radio, and uh, this can take uh, a bit, um, probably three four minutes, and. Uh, 
at some point in time, if it just sort of hangs and you look at it in the purple, the, the power button is purple, give it five or ten minutes and uh, if it hasn't come back online correctly, then you, you're clear to power cycle the radio. This doesn't happen very often, but it has happened and uh, there's no risk in doing this. You can start Smart SDR, and I did that right here by double clicking on Smart SDR. We were talking 2.5.1, that was the one we upgraded to. Well, I would like to be very clear about that. We can hit connect, and um, of course this all happened in another window, and I'll drag that back in so you can see it, and we can see that my radio is up and running on um, the version I like wanted, which was um, 2.5.1, says it right here, and we can go into settings and radio set setup, and you'll see that uh, we have the serial number, and our software version, and um, yeah, that's the whole uh, that's the whole thing. And one thing I want to point out as well that's uh, new in the in the later versions is this area called TX band settings. And TX band settings allow you to set your RF power to uh, maximum RF power by band and tune power by band. Uh, and as well, you'll notice that RCA TX1 that's a, the RCA port on the back of the radio that allows you to that you may use for most people to key your amplifier and to put your amplifier in transmit. Uh, you'll need to click that on for the bands you want. Uh, generally most amplifiers are 160 through to 10 or 6. And if you just hold, click on it with your mouse right over the checkbox and slide it all the way down like that, you can uh, turn it on and uh, now my amplifier is ready to go in transmit. So after you've updated Smart SDR on your computer, we now need to go over to the front panel display and update the front panel to 251. This is also true to the Maestro. Uh, the step is very similar, but you'll see that we see 251 and it has an up arrow here. And all we have to do is touch that and say update, and that's going to update the front panel of the radio. So that may take uh, a moment or two, and we'll just uh, let that cook for a second. And um, and once you've done that, you know, you've successfully completed your update in updating both the radio, the computer, and the front panel for your 6400M or your 6600M. And again, the same is also true for a Maestro. You want to make sure you, you collect, or sorry, you click on the right version and um, you'll be good to go. Now, this runs through a couple of different steps. We see step two of four. Um, it doesn't take too long, less than a couple of minutes, and uh, and then you're uh, you're on the air, not a problem. So after the radio comes up online, uh, it looks fairly normal, of course. And uh, if we go into menu, you'll see that um, there's a couple of things here. The TX band settings, TX band settings. This is where you turn on your amplifier uh, if you haven't done it in Smart SDR, or if you're using a Maestro. It's one of the first things you want to check. So I hope that helps you out, and uh, if you have any issues, uh, please let us know. Drop us an email, open a support ticket, uh, or uh, and we're happy to uh, to give you some guidance. Thanks very much.